So there are absolutely, as a coach, I know that there are absolutely ways that agents can find additional inventory that can come to the market. We're about to come to the market and they're not using, in my opinion, they're not using those additional tools. So just the basic stuff. If you have an agent that's well connected with other agents, they've got really great relationships. If they wanted to take their um, their expertise to another level or just their value to another level, they can go back to all the agents they worked with before and say, do you have a house that's coming on the market soon? Hi, this is Dave Steinberg, and this is the Mortgage is Made Easy podcast. I am delighted to have as our guest today, Donna Bruno. Donna is a 40-year realtor who is uh, really, at this stage, mostly trains other realtors in, in how to provide great service and how to get master real estate. Exactly. Um, and our topic today is how does a buyer in today's market where, boy, we hear these horror stories of people making offer after offer that are not not accepted. What's the mindset that a buyer needs and how do you do a plan? Success starts with a plan. What's the plan for a buyer in today's market? Okay, so my favorite thing with, with home buyers today, similar to, to sellers, is that they may not know what the market looks like or how to find houses or work with a, with an agent. Many, many agents, I should say many buyers today will pick up the phone, call somebody because they see a great sign and they don't know who they're getting on the other end. Now the agents have are licensed to the state. So there is a certain level of expertise that they have to gain to get their license. I get that. But they are all different, all different levels of of agents, just like people. Okay, mm. so one of the things that the buyers don't know is that the house, I should say, the realtor doesn't necessarily or should necessarily come with the house. They should interview agents because their approaches and what they're able to do will get them to the closing table if the agents are good. Okay, does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So, so let me ask you directly. Yeah. If you were buying a house in, you know, uh, Miami yep. and you're not licensed in Miami, yep. would you hire a buyer's agent or would you just uh, go and go to individual houses and do it on your own? I may do both. I think ultimately, if I was leaving where I live, now, and I'm in New York, if I was to go to Miami, I'd want to see just the personal ways that people do their businesses. So I want to get to know them personally, but I also would want to know what their training expertise and their value is. So majority of the agents today in the industry will, I think there's a sound bite that I want to say that everybody seems to be using and that there is no inventory no inventory. So that means that there's no listings. So there are absolutely, as a coach, I know that there are absolutely ways that agents can find additional inventory that can come to the market. We're about to come to the market and they're not using, in my opinion, they're not using those additional tools. So just the basic stuff if you have an agent that's well connected with other agents, they've got really great relationships. If they wanted to take their um, their expertise to another level or just their value to another level, they can go back to all the agents they worked with before and say, do you have a house that's coming on the market soon? Mm. Okay, Those are different things that they, you know, some of the things that they can do that are extra. 
they can and go back. That's to the value of having a buyer's agent. Exactly. You know, and, and because the, the when you walk into an open house and there is a realtor sitting there who's the listing agent, that means that that's the person who's helping the seller sell their home. They're not going to represent your best interest. Right. They represent the seller's interest always. Right. So in most cases, if you're doing a systematic search, I would always recommend that you find and develop a relationship with someone you can trust. And yeah, there are times that it works and times it works less well, but I'm a big proponent of having a buyer's agent help you find that next house because yes. they will understand, eventually they'll grow to understand your needs and they'll be able to um, facilitate your search. While if you just go from open house to open house and you, you don't have your realtor, you're going to be left holding the bag. And actually, if you are in the market right now to buy a home, there is an actually really easy way for you to find an agent that is certified in buyer representation. And that's to search for the accredited buyer representative. Those, those are the agents that on their business cards, or if you do a search, they have the letters ABR at the end of their names. And that's, they are, they're protecting your interest. Mm -hmm. They'll, um, and it doesn't have to be that it'll cost you anymore. It's just that we want you to know that that's available to represent you and not the seller. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, and you could still walk into an open house, you know, let them know that you're work, walking into the open house so nobody's going to prevent you from doing that if you're buying. But the agent can get you registered and make sure that you they come back and tell you what you should do or what you shouldn't do when you're in the house. Because one of the things in a public open house is that there can be recording things that go on. Mm. So, so if you're talking to a, a, an agent right there, about the house and their understanding that you maybe, you know, maybe you're working on a pre-approval or maybe you hope to buy right away or, you know, whatever that can hurt your negotiability. Not only is that, that, that agent going to know that and they don't represent you, but it also might be recorded for playback too. Yeah. So you know, I've, been with hearing about that. Okay. I've been hearing about that so that, if you if you were my agent and we walked into a house together and I'm going to go, boy, this is exactly what we were looking for. Yeah, this is exactly what we. But now the buyer is giving away their cards. They have shown their cards to the seller, to the seller's realtor, who now exactly. knows that they can push you just that much more. Exactly. Exactly. So technology has changed a lot. So. When I, I was practicing with my ABR, I've had that for at least 15 years. And so I would just say to the, the clients when they get out, you're going to love this house, but don't show any signs of emotion. I'll answer everything in the backyard or in your car or in my car, or we'll go for coffee. Just take a look at the house, get a list of questions, and we're going to walk, walk through that as we make an offer. So yeah. we spoke earlier about lack of inventory. Yes. If you're a realtor working with a buyer in a tough market in Westchester yes. County in 2023, what advice do you have so that my offer is, uh, is put in front of all the others? How how do I get my best foot forward as a buyer? So in in steps, make sure if you're a buyer buying now, some of them you'll already know. So make sure your credit is good. Make sure you're not buying a new car or furniture before you close, but make sure that you have a pre-approval and that it's updated. Hmm. Because when the mortgage, when the mortgage rates change, the amount that you can spend is a little bit different depending on where that mortgage rate is that week. So always have an updated 
um, mor uh, mortgage approval. Have your loan officer on speed dial. If you're going out, have a new one done. This way, there's no question about what's happening. Right, Dave? You could do that. That's, mm -hmm. what, that's your business, right? Um, so that's that's one thing. Um, no, I I would not. I'm just going to put this in here because this seems to be some sound bites in our area. I, If I was representing somebody, I would question them and actually say to them, say to them please do not write a love letter. Mm. Don't write, you know, why, why I think I'm the best person. Okay. For your house. The fact that we have, you know, we were raised in the neighborhood or whatever thing, thing that you want that seller to believe to put you into pr first position. It's probably not a good idea for you to have those letters written. It's not I'm illegal, sure but it's not a great idea to have that. Okay. Mm -hmm. So pre-approval is updated. Um, stating, stating the case that you have nothing to sell. I would probably want that buyer to have an updated CMA, so a comparative market analysis on the property, so they know what they're buying and that they understand also what their um, their payback rate will be every month so that they, they can adjust to it and that it's just not that they've been pre-approved for a $450,000 loan, so that they're, edu they're educated. Hmm. So the so ability ability to buy, um, knowledge of the market. What else? Um, I clear a uh, really great credit. If they have to depend on anybody else for their down payment, they've got to get that. They've got to get that nailed in. And I think the other thing is just just to make sure. It was just as I was mentioned as, as I was thinking about this. Um, make sure that they've got the down payment because sometimes they need to act very, very, very quickly. And sometimes people will need to get the money out of their 401k or maybe their parents are going to give them some, some money and help. Make sure all that's squared away. So have your 10%, which is traditional in most of our market, have 10% in cash in your checking account, so go. you can write a check the next day. Yep. Mm -hmm. And and the and the other thing, so that they continue to fall in love with the house, is when you finish and you've decided that you really want to pay make an offer, write that offer up. But while your agent is working to negotiate that sale, and they'll stay in communication with you, go and knock on some doors and and ask some questions about where things are. Like, is, is there internet in, so in, in the neighborhood? Sometimes there's not. Um, is it close by to schools? Is it, is it close by to the parkways? Get to know the community. This way, when you fall in love with the house and you get the keys, you really are in love with the house and it's going to work for you. Yeah. That's I always tell my buyers to go to a house at different times of day yes. and different days of the week, if possible, because- uh -huh. You know, the last thing you want to do is find out that your corner is the one where people are hanging out and playing music at three in the morning or um, or the, there's uh, whatever could be going on. Sometimes it's great stuff. Sometimes you find out that this your community, that the community you're looking at has, you know, my my block in Queens where I live. People call it the bungalow block because everyone is so warm and friendly. So it's like it's, it's it's like being in summer camp with your neighbors, um, and that's something that takes a little bit of research. I would add one thing to that uh, in my experience, and that is have a dream team all set up so yes. that if you are looking to make an offer and to be taken seriously, have your attorney lined up, have your home inspector lined up, have your home insurance agent up, and communicate that. Say, yes. I'm, I'm not an amateur. I'm not just dabbling. I, I fully intend to buy this house and I'm prepared to buy this house. Um, and then as a mortgage guy, what I would say is what we try to do 
is two additional things. Number one, we try to communicate to the seller's broker why our client is uniquely positioned. And we also work hard in situations where it makes sense for to to talk about in this market where there's a lot of things going on, we try to talk about what happens if an appraisal is a little bit low. You're in a you're in a competitive environment. A house was listed at six, and you're going to offer six fifty. What does that mean to the appraisal? How will that translate to your ability to get the mortgage? Figure that out up front. Right. So I've I've written a class now called Getting Buyers to the Closing Table. Wow. And there is so much, wouldn't you agree? There's so much in the process that you, there's so much that you could plan for, but there's so much that you can't plan for. So by choosing a great agent, you're you really should give them the ability to to sit down with them and do a pre-meeting like the first time. Sit down with them, whether it's on Zoom or in person. And let them give you a little bit of a presentation. Everybody gets to know what everybody else needs, right? Buyers don't don't always do that. So from the agent's point of view, it's they may be taking what they call floor time. They're waiting for phone calls to come in. Buyer might say, I'm at a, sitting at a house. I want to get in. So can you unlock the door? Agent can do that, but they can do so much more. So my wish list for anybody buying now is really to hire an agent that gives you the buyer consultation to set the tone for everything else. Mm. That could take 15 minutes just to get you started. And then as you get um, you get deeper into the process, let's say your deal gets accepted, maybe another five or 10, 15 minutes, maybe longer, depending on what you need, what's going to happen next so that it doesn't begin to be a very scary process because it can with you not knowing what the expectations are. Donna, thank you so much. Thank you for joining us. This has been really educational. I've learned stuff just listening to you. This is the Mortgages Made Easy podcast. We've had the pleasure of being joined by Donna Bruno, and we will be posting her information below. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Dave.